It is estimated that one in five parents engage in intense, prolonged, unhealthy conflict with their teenage children that is associated with juvenile delinquency, moving away from home, increased school dropout rates, unplanned pregnancy, and drug abuse. What is really going on here? And what are three questions that every person who interacts with a teenager should ask themselves? It is Super Nanny Saturday. I am so happy that you are here. Grab yourself a beverage and let's get started. Did you make up your mind yet? About what? My hand is hurting too. Your hair? Too. No, not yet. I'll talk to mom about it tonight. But I want to know. I'll I want to do it. it now. How many days in a row have I heard about your hair? Every day for the past three because months. Because you a while, never answer annoying. me. We have Taylor and John. Taylor typical teen. She's starting to express herself. She wants to dye her hair. And then you have traditional John, the father, who sees his little girl as a little girl still and is struggling with these changes of independence. Now, we are not going to discuss whether or not John and the wife should allow the daughter or not allow her to dye her hair, because that is both a cultural question and a parent decision. But what we will discuss is when an adult is laying down a boundary, what they will or will not allow in their home, how they go about laying down that boundary means everything when it comes to the relationship with their child. Notice how when Taylor goes up to dad, her hands are clasped and she says, have you made up your mind? And then dad says, I'm going to talk to mom about it later. And then she whines. They are off to the races. John has now engaged in this argument with his daughter, and then he goes as far as to call her behavior annoying. You know what, Dad? You are actually being annoying too because this daughter has had to ask you for three months the same question. She has been waiting for an answer for three months, and you continue to tell her later and string her along. This may have worked when your daughter was much younger, when you know, we've all done it. You redirect your child, they ask for something and you try to keep them busy doing something else and then they forget about it. Teenagers don't forget. And in her world, this is a big deal. And that brings me to question number one. Ask yourself, are you minimizing feelings? In his world, this is something small, but in her world, this is something big. And yes, I get it. Dad is busy probably with a job. He probably spends hardly any time with his wife between her and the, the child who is also disabled. And I'm sure he doesn't come home from a long day and then say, let's sit down and discuss whether or not Taylor should be able to dye her hair. But if you are dismissing your child's feelings and you are minimizing it, what is that message that you're sending to your child? Because if you are not actively listening to them, they will find someone who is. So because I have to look how you want me to look? No, you don't have to look how I want you to look. I gave you my opinion. I like your natural color better. Because you don't like it, I shouldn't be able to do it. That's what you have parents for. Sometimes you have to listen to them. Sometimes you never let me do anything. Joe Frost and her face, she looked right at the camera. You guys saw that? She is so validating when she's observing during these days and she looks at the camera like, ah, do you see what I see? Yes, I see it. Dad is engaging in a conversation that is escalating. His daughter is using what we call exaggerated statements. You never let me do anything. You never listen to me. When we use words like never and always, we are grasping at straws because we feel misunderstood. So we're trying to exaggerate the situation so that the person we're talking to can hear us and listen to us. And in this situation, we have an adult and we have a child. He is matching her level and acting like a teenager himself. And that brings us to question number two. When you're interacting with a teenager, am I escalating the situation or am I de-escalating the situation? Be the adult. You just said this morning, Dan, if you let me color my hair, I won't say I hate you. Because you're- I won't disrespect well, you. Well, that's probably not true because you're still mean to me no matter what I do. Yeah, fine, fine, go do it. I can't wait to see it, go. And I hope your hair falls out. Whatever. Whatever. Come on, dad. Come on, dad. <sighs> did you see what he did? 
For three months, Taylor has been asking for this. She has whined on a daily basis. And then he gives in. He says that she could dye her hair. Dad, if you decide that your daughter cannot dye her hair, have this conversation. First of all, they're in the living room having this conversation. If you saw the whole episode with the mother there and the teenagers involved. No, 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 no. Take you and your wife, go to a private area, have a conversation and make a decision and stick with it. If you don't want to let her dye her hair, you don't let her dye her hair. Have a limit. Say you'll be able to dye your hair when you're 15. Think of perhaps compromises. Like let's say your child wants to get a tattoo. You say, well, you can't get a tattoo until you're whatever age in our family, but maybe we can get a henna tattoo. Or with Taylor in this case, can we look into wash out hair dyes? There's lots of things that are temporary. Talk with your spouse, your partner, about where your limits are and then just stick with them because what he has taught his teenage daughter to do right now is if you poke and prod and whine and exaggerate enough, you will eventually break me down and I will give in. And then on top of that, oh dad, he says, I hope your hair falls out. Oh, the lack of emotional maturity. So our final question, question number three, when you're interacting with a teenager is what is your goal here? Before you engage in that conversation, know what you are okay with, what you are not okay with. And if you start the conversation and you're not sure, you can say that to a teenager. You could say, listen, I have a lot of information in my head right now and I want, I'm just gonna listen to you right now. Tell me why you want this. Tell me how you feel about it. I'm gonna take in all of that information and then I'm really gonna sit down and think about it and then I'm gonna get back to you and then give a reasonable amount of time. Three months is not a reasonable amount of time, in my opinion, for getting back to your teenage daughter about what she wants to do with her own body. Now, if you say no, that is your decision as the adult, but give your child the respect that you would give another adult. Would you wait, make another adult wait three months? Would you continue to tell them later, later, later? And at the end of this scene, Joe Frost does sit down with his teenager and truly listens to her. And we find out that she has a lot of negative feelings that are way deeper than just hair. She wants her father's love and approval. And as much as she comes off like strong and I don't care, she does reveal that it hurts her and she does wish that she had a better relationship with her father. And then they make amends. So let's watch that sweet part together. My daughter, I just wanna ask you if we can start over. Okay. They hugged one another, and it was just a really great moment. Your dad's crying upstairs because he feels bad. I love you. I love you too. It was like this weight had been lifted off of her shoulders completely. Once again, Joe Frost pulling on those heartstrings because we are all imperfect and trying our best. So if you find that you're doing something that you wish you could change, acknowledge that with your child, apologize, be vulnerable. It is not weak. And it actually gives them an example of how they can come forward and be vulnerable and open with you too. It is never too late to connect and restart with your child. Before I go, I would really like to say thank you to everyone who commented last week on the video. I really appreciate your life perspective, your wisdom, and the time that you took to share. So thank you for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye. Doo -doo. Super Nanny Saturday.